Hi, this is Ralph, and in this video I want to go over creating a, uh, a web page, form, and JavaScript that will allow a customer to choose various options for a particular product. And when they choose the, when they choose the options, the options will, will show up visually as part of an image, and we'll also have an updated price over here. So let me just kind of show you what we're going to create here. Uh, in this case, our product is a stick figure, and they've got different categories of options. They can choose different kinds of shirts, and when they choose a particular shirt, the shirt will show up and the cost of that shirt gets added to the total options. So there's a base price, total options, shipping cost, and then of course a grand total. And they can choose to go back to no shirt or they can choose a series of pants, different combinations, combinations of shirts. And they can also have a little select menu down here so they can choose different shipping methods. There we go. And basically all this is getting updated on change whenever they change something about the options. And there is nothing on the proceed to checkout. That's disabled. So that's the challenge for us. And we'll probably have to do this over a couple of videos. But we'll move along and uh, take care of it. So that's what we're going to create. So I'm going to jump over to my editor of choice, which is Notepad++. And I'm going to go ahead and get started up here. Um, I will occasionally pause my recorder so I can type a lot more. Yeah, so you don't have to watch me type. And the files that I do here, I, I will make for download. There'll be a link in the description of the video, so you can always check it out there. But I'm going to start off by making my web page. I've actually already got it saved. It's called stickfigure2.html. And I'm going to go ahead and create my web page. So I'm, of course, I need doc type, HTML, head section, title. Character encoding. and we'll go ahead and finish off our head section. There we go. So in the head section I do have a place. I'm going to do some internal style. So I've only got one HTML file, one page here. Uh, we're also going to, I'm going to do the JavaScript internally. There we go. And that concludes the head section of the page. Then in the body of the page of course is where we're going to have our visible elements. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to the body section. I want to start to create the basic page. And my page um, is going to have three core sections. So I don't know if you recall, over here on my stick figure, I've got the, the form over here. I've got the where the images are going to show up, and I've got where the pricing area is going to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and create those pretty quickly. I'll just jump back over to my editor, and I'm going to create three key sections. And they're all going to be divs. I'll have a ID equals form. scroll this up here a little bit ID equals prices and ID equals images I know what you're thinking I'm putting these out of order correct well I'm gonna do a three column basically a three column layout so my first div I'm gonna float to the left my second div I'm gonna float to the right and my third div is gonna slide up right in between those two so that'll take care of that Okay, so those are, my, those are my three divs, and I don't really need a lot of content in there right now to start up my basic structure, so I'm going to scroll up here to my style sheet, so inside of my style sheet, I want to start to create the CSS rules that will control the layout of my page. Okay, so I've taken care of that. So let's see, my first div is my form div. It's going to be 300 pixels wide and it's floating to the left. My next div is prices. It's going to be 300 pixels wide and floating on the right. And my third div in the middle is, is my images div. It's got margin left and margin right that is at least as big as the width of that left and right column. Um, now I've set the width and the height of my images div very specifically. And this kind of goes along with the actual image that I'm going to be using, my stick figure image. The background image I'm going to be using is my actual stick figure. Okay, so I've already created this JPEG image. It's a stick figure. And that's the background image for this particular div. And I'm also doing position relative. I'm going to do position relative on the div that contains my images because I want to absolutely position the images that are within that div. So that takes care of that particular section. So now I'm going to scroll back down to the body of my page and I'm going to start to construct the form. Now my form is going to go inside of my div right in here. So let's put that together. Set of form tags. I'll do a, 
Let's move that out of the way. Method equals post for action. I'm just going to put a dummy action in there. And I also, I don't want this form to get processed. So I'm going to do an on submit equals, and I'll just send up an alert. Um, no checking out semicolon that's going to be one statement okay that'll just pop up an alert but I'm also going to return false okay so this goes inside of the on submit so basically if somebody tries to submit the form I'm going to pop up an error message okay and I'm also going to return false which is going to keep the form from trying to go to the action or to get processed okay so I'm just going to keep that from happening now I'm going to start to create the various form elements, and there's quite a bit to this, so I'm going to go ahead and pause my screen while I get that posted up there. Okay, so here we go. So I've got a number of field sets, and a field set is just what it sounds like. It's a group of fields in a form. And my first group here, my first field set is for radio buttons where a person can choose what kind of shirt they want their stick figure to have. So I've, they're all uh, radio buttons. They share the same name. Radio buttons in the same group should share the same name. They do have unique IDs and unique values. And they've all got an on change event handler. Now, I haven't even done the JavaScript yet. Basically, this is what it's going to be called. I'm going to create a function called update total. And I'll be doing that very, very soon. Whenever somebody changes something about any of these form elements, that function is going to get called. And then I have some labels. And this is, of course, these go along with the various uh, radio buttons. So I've got a group of four radio buttons for shirts. I've got a group of four radio buttons for pants. They're all pretty similar. They all have on change in there to call the function, which I will create soon. Now, the other field set that I've got is the shipping method. Okay, The shipping method is a selection menu or a drop-down menu. The selection menu uses an opening and closing select tag. The select tag has a name, has an ID, and once again, I have that on change event handler calling the function which I have yet to create, update total. Now my selection menu has three options. There's an option for standard shipping, three-day shipping, and overnight shipping. They each have a unique value so I can identify them. So there's a value for each of the three options. And the text in between the opening and closing option tag is what the user is going to see on the screen. Then I have one last field set, which is a generic submit button, input type submit value proceed to checkout. So normally when somebody clicks a submit button on a form, the data of the form goes to the address contained in the action attribute. Well, since I have a dummy action, I don't want the form trying to go there, which is why, of course, I did this on submit a little bit earlier, return false. Return false is going to keep my form data from going to the action, going to the script, or the server side script. So there's my basic form. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. I'm going to jump back over to my browser. And of course, I'm not looking at this page anymore. So I need to go to stick figure two. There we go. So this is my page as it looks right now. I've got my form on the left. There's my div for images with its background image showing up. So things are moving along pretty well. One more thing I'm going to create in this video is I want to create the, the table where my prices are going to get displayed. I'm going to do a little bit more CSS formatting and then we'll start to uh, get our uh, gears working on the script in order to take care of the price updates. So back over to my editor and I'm going to scroll on down to where my uh, prices are going to show up. Okay, So my price is going to be right in here in this particular div. There we go. So I've created a table. And my table is not very complicated. I've got a set of table tags. And within those table tags, I've got a set of four rows. So my table has four rows. And within each row, there are two cells. The first cell in each row contains really the label. What is the person going to see on screen to let them know what's the purpose of that row? The second cell in each row is where my data is going to show up. So, and by the way, each of these cells is uniquely identified. I've got base price, options price, shipping price, and total price. Now, my base price is going to display automatically, so I've just typed that, that one in as $500. So let me go ahead and save this. Go back over to my browser. Refresh. 
and we can see where this is going to show up right over here on the right side. So now I've got my form, I've got my generic image, background image really, and I've got my table where my prices are going to show up. Let me do some quick formatting um, style sheets to make this form look a little bit better. So I'm going to move up here to my styles and I want to control a little bit more about that table. Okay, so I've put in two CSS rules in my styles to manipulate elements about my table. So let's see, my table cells, notice these are the cells within my table. Um, they've got a certain background color, that's a light green. I've put margin on the cells, padding on the cells. I'm going to uh, right align the text within the cells, and my cells are going to be 100 pixels wide. Now, the cells that are within my last row okay so I've got four TR tags I've got four sets of table rows well the last row the cells in that one they're gonna have a different background color they're gonna have a different foreground color and they're gonna be bold so now I can save this jump back over to my browser and now when I hit refresh my table has a slightly more finished look so there's my pricing table images in the middle and my basic menu of options so in the next video I'm gonna start cranking out the uh, JavaScript in order to get this working